So next on our inspection and testing series on electrical equipment, we are going to be looking at the medium and high voltage SFC circuit breakers. So if you are not familiar with the operations, I also encourage you to check the, the description below for a link to the operations of SFC circuit breakers. So as usual, we are going to be looking at two different types of inspection, the physical and the electrical inspection. So as usual, during the physical inspection, the first thing is to compare the nameplate information to see that it is uh, as specified, okay? We'll look at all of these parameters and see that it is what is actually specified and it matches what we have on the drawings of uh, that particular circuitry. We also want to look at the physical and mechanical conditions of the circuit breaker the SSC circuit breaker to see that there are no visible signs of stress or strain on the circuit breaker, no dent, especially on the moving parts, okay, and those insulated parts too. We want to be, want to be sure that everything, the insulation, everything is uh, intact. So the anchorage, we want to check to see that it is firm. We want to check the alignment and also. The grounding connection too. We want to check that uh, it is uh, firm, okay, so that it is not during switching that the circuit breaker will start moving, okay, from where it is uh, connected or where it is fixed. So those are some of the things that we need to check. Then we want to also see that the circuit breaker is clean, free of dirt, free of debris, and. Uh, we, if uh, we have provisions for sampling the SSC gas, we also want to sample the gas and then test in accordance with uh, this table. So first is the moisture content. The moisture content should be less than 200 uh, parts per million. Okay. So if it is higher than, then we know it is due for servicing. So we need to follow the specified servicing procedure by uh, by the manufacturer of that circuit breaker. Then the SSS decomposition uh, uh, byproduct should also be less than 500 parts per million. Then air content should also be less than 5,000 parts per million. Then the dielectric strength of the circuit breaker at this gap okay should be between 11.5 to 13.5 kilo volts so we'll take sample of the ssc's gas these are some of the tests that we need to carry out then we want to also inspect the operating mechanism to see that uh, it will operate properly during operations. Remember, the operating mechanism is the part that is responsible for opening and closing the circuit breaker contact. Okay? So we want to be sure that they will not fail us when we actually need them. So we want to also test for SSC's leak in accordance with uh, the manufacturer's recommendation. We want to verify the correct operations of uh, those alarm uh, switches or indicating devices. The pressure limit switch, okay. We also want to look at all of them and also the SSC's gas pressure. So we want to verify their correct, uh, that is pressure switch in their correct operation in accordance to the manufacturer's recommendation. Then if the manufacturer actually recommends, we can slow close or open the breaker and check if, if check for signs of binding, friction or contact alignment, uh, check for binding and friction as we did in uh, the case of the SQ breaker. We can also look for contact alignment and uh, penetration, okay? I also want to be sure that the 
contact, they are closing at the same time. The circuit uh, breaker analyzer will tell us who will perform the electrical test. So what to also do is the mechanical operation that is want to close, open, close, open the circuit breaker, cycle it for some time. Okay, to be sure that every part of the circuit breaker is free to move, and that will do in accordance to our lay down the lay down procedures in our facility or that that is recommended by the manufacturer. So the next that we'll be looking at is um, electrical tests on the SFC's circuit breaker. So we'll do that with the circuit breaker analyzer once more. So we'll be looking at the contact resistance. The circuit breaker analyzer has the features to test the contact resistance for us, okay? We'll be looking at uh, the bolted, the resistance across the bolted connections on the bolted connections. We'll also be looking at the solution resistance, which is to determine the dielectric strength of the insulation, okay, between faces and between face and ground. So we want to perform that resistance measurement across bolted connections. Okay, to see that we have the most minimal resistance at those potted connections. We also want to perform the insulation resistance tests. Okay, for between phases, between phase and ground. We want to do that. So this is an example of a low resistance ohm meter. But remember, the circuit breaker analyzer, as we saw earlier, have the features to help us test. So this is the insulation resistance value that we are expecting if we inject any of these uh, voltages, okay, from the insulation of the circuit breaker. So anything lower than this, we want to be sure to verify, that we want to make sure that we verify the cause of that drop. So we perform the insulation resistance test on all the control wiring, but we need to be careful in this case, follow the recommendation of the manufacturer so that we do not go and cause damage, okay, to the circuitry, the protection circuitry because of the sensitive electronic devices that may be contained in them. Then we will also perform contact pole resistance when it is closed. Check for the resistance between the contacts. That is when the circuit breaker is closed. So the with the analyzer, we can perform the minimum uh, pickup voltage on the trip coil and uh, the closing coil. The minimum voltage at which they are energized. Okay, we we'll test all of those. They will also perform the power factor and dissipation factor test on the breaker. Like we said earlier, you can also check the link, uh, the description below for a link to uh, the power factor test. So basically, the power factor test, we are looking at the, insula the insulation integrity, okay? The dielectric strength of the insulation of the circuit breaker between phases, between phase one, between phase one and two, between phase two and three, and between phase three and one. Okay, and between phase, this is the, phase, this is the bushing, between phase and the ground. Then if the circuit breaker is open, we can test across each of the phases to get the dielectric strength of the insulation between the contacts, okay? Invariably, what we are doing in this case now is to test the insulation of the SFC's gas. So we also want, also want to perform the minimum pickup voltage test on the trip and close coil, as we said earlier. Then we want to verify the operation of any auxiliary equipment or features, such as the close or trip operations, the trip-free operations, and the uh, so we want to trip the circuit breaker by operating each of the protective devices to see that the circuit breaker will actually 
respond. We can also carry, in addition, we can also carry the electric withstand tests, okay? So in some facility, there may be no much need since we have performed the power factor test. But you can perform the dielectric withstand test. All of these are meant to actually confirm the integrity of the insulation of the circuit breaker. So these are some of the, uh, the test voltage that we can inject, okay? under different operating voltage conditions.